Hey everybody, welcome to Trading Capital's daily analysis video. I'm your head market analyst here on this Wednesday, September 21st. Jumping into the S&P 500, what an amazing wild day it was. And this is why trusting the charts is the critical, critical thing to do, especially when we have as volatile periods as we have just due to the economic data. So what happened today? The long-awaited Jay Powell. Now there's a few things we need to touch on. Jay Powell and the Fed raised rates by the expected 0.75%, but they definitely reinforced that inflation is still their main target and that history is not kind to those that let inflation out of the bottle. And the people that they represent, the lower to middle income class, are the ones that are detrimentally affected by inflation, so therefore that is still their top priority. They even went on to insist that the labor market once again should experience pain and will experience pain. And then even a reporter asked that even if they um, see softening in the real estate market, will they um, pause you know, rate hikes in QT, which there wasn't much touching on QT, which I thought was very, very interesting. But overall, you can see that this head and shoulders pattern that we played out is now triggering again clearly with this massive, massive down move on the S&P, closing down 1.71%. And the beautiful thing is that you filled this gap and you filled this gap, which is why I'm in the camp now since people have turned so bearish just off of this last meeting that we should get somewhat of a technical bounce. You are at support. You haven't really had that much of a convincing bounce, even though you've had a pretty tremendous sell-off into support. So overall, short term, I'm a slightly bullish. Um, medium and long term, I'm still bearish. I think we test the June lows over here and actually make new lower lows in Q4, quarter four, which is fast approaching. So nonetheless, spiders are at support, but what happened today? It was absolutely wild. I mean, this is where we, let me just find my bearings here. This is where we gapped up. Markets had a little bit of strength, hit that intraday 10 minute, 200 day moving average. We're chopping, chopping. And then you had a big sell off as soon as the Fed interest rate happened. And then a massive, massive rally <clears throat> as the algorithms and people digested the interest rate hike. And then Jay Powell started speaking and it was just downhill from there, downhill, downhill, downhill. And you can see you're on a beautiful one, two, three, four, five, six bar surge to a low into support. I still think we get a retrace at the minimum back to this 3826 level. So I do think we get some sort of a technical bounce. And I just want to say congratulations on the likes of like, you know, Tell, which we we picked up today for a beautiful win. If we simply look at TELL, we picked it up yesterday at 283, sold it up here at 315, 314, made it over 12% gain. So lovely J in one 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 fell swoop. We also, um, let's just see what else we did. We were basically buying a lot of stocks today. So at the end of the bell, I issued a few alerts, um, one for HPQ. I just wanna show you the HPQ chart. So if I pull up the HPQ daily chart, you can see why I've started to accumulate some HPQ. You had this beautiful technical gap fill, which you've just touched gap window. You do have this down sloping parallel channel, which should act as support. You're hitting that right now. And then you've also had this pretty impeccable sell-off with a little bit of a, a down sloping um, wedge pattern starting to form. Down sloping wedge patterns are notorious for breaking up, especially when you are at support levels in oversold condition. Uh, we also picked up, um, added more to our Alcoa. So AA, so Alcoa got completely demolished today. We are out of the money, but we did two buys today. Alcoa, again, is one of those names that is was trading up to 58 now at 39. You're into this double bottom support. I think we get a little bit of a technical bounce before we head lower. Um, that being said, there is the possibility that we head lower to this 37 before bounce or even this 36, which we have plenty of maneuverability in the event. We also added to a few shorts. I mean, if you look at the daily chart on Cardinal Health, it's the stock that has been on a tremendous tear all year. It is completely extended, but when you have this type of formation happening, this broadening formation um, at the highs of the chart. That is extremely bearish. I wanted to start as short on this because we did fill this technical gap. So on a technical basis, this chart is now complete to the upside, whereas to the downside, there's a lot more action to fulfill to make it more of a technically sound chart. I do think we get a retrace back to this 63 minimum, and then you may see a little bit of a bounce, 
but at the very minimum, I think Cardinal Health is at least coming back down to this 59.75 area. Um, we also um, shorted uh, ITUB. You can clearly see why we shorted ITUB. So this is your head and shoulders pattern that broke down, triggered. Here's your neckline. Boom, boom, boom. You've retraced to the neckline here. You've also retraced to the neckline here. You're into a little bit of a, a mini double top scenario. And what a beautiful ad that was. You're in an extended state. You have not confirmed above this topping tail, which is still technically resistance. And I wanted to get some exposure to ITUB because I do think this has a little bit more downside in the short term as well. Um, we also bought AI. So a little bit of a buying spree. You can tell that as people were panicking and selling, this is what we thrive in and wait for. This is over a 40% decline from 23 all the way to 1327. Um, if you take a look at this beautiful retrace, so I actually still, let me just erase these two lines so we don't have any distractions. But if you simply look at this sell-off on AI, I mean, at a high of 170 or 184, now you're trading at 1330, and you follow this downsloping trend line, which connects your major, major pivot here, major pivot here, and this was your breakout, check back, and then you broke out of this pattern. And now what patterns typically like to do is to retrace to the, um, to the original breakout line. And this original breakout line just so happens to coincide with a double bottom. So that is two technical factors in an oversold state. That makes it three. Its valuation is actually making sense right now. And not to say that this can't go lower, but I think it's now at a perfect level for us to start accumulating yet again another position. Uh, we also added to CLF today. So Cleveland Cliffs, our steel play. Um, overall, let me erase a couple of these. Uh, CLF, yes, it has put in a little bit of bearish pattern, but it doesn't mean that we can't get a little bit of a retrace bounce on CLF. This is an impeccable sell-off from this 19 to this 45. You are at these technical support trend lines. You have two of them connecting your pivots to your major pivots. And then you also have this beautiful double bottom, which you actually pierced, made a brief interim low. And I do think we can get a technical bounce off of this level. Um, again, I'm still very, very bearish, but short term, I do think people have overreacted. Um, Alibaba was one that got decimated today along with a few other Chinese plays like Neo, LI, but nonetheless, we added to our Alibaba technical gap fill. I still love Alibaba. You you could be getting a retrace similar to AI back to this downsloping trend line, which will act as support. But overall, I'm pretty happy with our average sitting at around 80 or sorry, 91.85. Um, so we're slightly out of the money, but again, these types of charts where you've had this accumulation zone, which we are now approaching very, very quickly, I do think that Alibaba can get a technical bounce off of this level, one that we kind of saw in this early March period where it nearly almost, you know, went from 73 to 123. That was almost a 50% move. So nonetheless, I'm still short-term bullish, um, uh, long-term, medium-term bearish. If we take a look at the QQQ, so the QQQ also breaking critical support. You can see you had this trend line which you broke, this trend line which you broke. You did fill a technical gap, but you actually sliced through it. So next downside target I think is this major pivot low. So maybe big cap tech still has a little bit more downside to go. If we take a look at oil, oils pretty much was not really a that bad of a day considering the market sold off tremendously. Nonetheless, it was still down 1.33%. So really nothing to do on oil chart. Natural gas is still lingering with this neckline. Uh, on a technical basis, I still have it calculated that this head and shoulders pattern has been negated. Um, although I do think that there is more downside in natural gas, you could be forming a little bit of a bear flag here. If you start to form this bear flag under the neckline, that could be a little bit of an opportunity to potentially short with a few more extra days of consolidation to make it more of a mature pattern. Obviously, this is a little bit of a premature pattern, so it's unlikely to play out yet. But with a few more days of consolidation underneath this neckline, that may prove to be a decent shortable opportunity as bear flags at the highs of charts have more likelihood of breaking down. Um, we also added to our HUA and we also picked up, um, that's pretty much it, a little bit of CGC as well. Um, let's take a look at the US dollar. So what transpired, why did the market sell? Well, if we look at the US dollar, the DXY, the DXY actually hit my max upside target of 11, 111.54. But nonetheless, this is important now because the US dollar has short term had a breakout. 
tomorrow's confirmation day. If you can close above this high on the chart here around, let me just see what that level is. If you can close around above this 115.18, then the US dollar is heading to the top of this channel. And we'll just have to see. If the US dollar starts to um, fall tomorrow, then I do think we potentially have a little bit of a failed breakout. And you could see the US dollar consolidate maybe back in this bull flag range. But nonetheless, a short term breakout on the dollar. Um, one of the reasons why, if we look at the US two year yield, so the, the, the US dollar is going to uh, keep applying a tremendous amount of pressure to the overall market. So we have to continue to monitor that. Um, but if you look at the US two year yield, again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 days in a row, you briefly hit 4.12, which is an astonishing level. If we flip to the weekly, I mean, the last time you hit 4.2 was all the way back here in 2007. So that is a critical level. Um, yields are clearly soaring, clearly unstoppable at this point in time, which is why the um, dollar is continuing to store. But if the interesting thing about the yields is that this is the short term yield chart. If we look at, say, the US 10 year, you know, oh, let me just fix that chart. If we look at the US 10 year, the US 10 year had a little bit of a reversal signal, failing to confirm that breakout. So you had a short term breakout, and now you actually did not get confirmation on the US 10 year yield breakout. So that does lead me to conclude that maybe this is a short term fake out on the dollar and that yields have kind of reached a peak. So the long end yields are starting to soften a little bit when you compare it to the short terms. If you actually look at the 20 year yield, um, because we are picking up UBT, if we take a look at the UBT chart, this has had a significant bearish engulfing candle. So you made a new high today and you actually engulfed the previous candle and the previous candle close on the second last day. So short term, I am the, the signals that I'm getting on the long end of the curve is very intriguing. Uh, we are long UBT, so that's obviously inverse of the um, US 20 year. And you can see where we added um, two days ago. That's proving to be a beautiful, beautiful addition to our position. We're almost in the money on our UBT. I still think the UBT has a tremendous amount of upside in the event that yields start to pull back and consolidate. And kind of the period where I think yields are kind of going to mimic, I think we could see something like this because it's interesting, even with the 0.75% hike today and Powell's comments, we really haven't been able to confirm above this peak hawkishness from the Fed all the way in June. But yet the markets are now approaching, they're, they're, where our yields are higher than what we were in June, but the markets are also higher. So if we take a look at the SPX um, and you flip to the daily, this is where yields peaked in June and this is where the market is. So considering yields are higher, it does suggest that we likely should head much, much lower on the S&P 500, just comparing a relative valuation from the bond and credit markets to the overall stock market. Um, gold was interesting today as well too. Um, gold finished basically slightly positive on the session. It was a little bit higher, but overall the question is, are we starting to make a bear flag here? Obviously this is going to coincide with the US dollar, but the interesting thing is that even with the surge in the US dollar, gold basically made a brief intraday new low, but managed to rally substantially off the low despite the US dollar making a new um, potential short term breakout high. So nonetheless, that is a little bit of relative strength continuing to happen in gold. Um, silver is the outperformer clearly, clearly um, managing and, and holding up the precious metal sector by itself. This beautiful bullish pattern was short term almost trying to break out today. You can see you've tagged this resistance, which is now weakened. This is actually very, very short term bullish if you're a technical analyst, because now you've come up to resistance, hit it, weaken that trend line, still consolidating bullishly, which makes me think that, or it's not what I think, it's what the probabilities dictate that the next push up is likely to break out of this resistance down sloping trend line. So that is just a very, very interesting thing. If we look at the GDX, so the gold miners, the miners are still holding up relatively well. Um, the GDX did finish slightly positive today, up 0.34% but still holding its range even though the dollar made a new high. Our Pan American Silver PAAS is still basically um, outperforming. It was up over, or it was up about 2% on the day, but it's come in slightly, still finished positive on the day, so that is healthy and good to see. But let's take a look at some of these reversals that we saw. Let's take a look at Tesla. You know, Tesla intraday, 
if we take a look at the intraday action on Tesla, Tesla has been trading, I'll go to the hourly chart. Tesla was chopping in this wedge pattern, upsloping wedge patterns. What have I talked about about upsloping wedge patterns? Upsloping wedge patterns are notorious to breaking to the downside. And what do we have here? A test of the resistance failed. Consolidate, another test failed. And then look at this big reversal candle. That thing is nasty. It made Tesla go negative on the day, which is certainly good for our short positions. Even the likes of, say, Apple. Just looking at big cap tech, big cap tech really got crushed and hurt today. Flipping to the intraday chart, um, nasty hourly reversal. Flipping to the intraday 10 minute chart, look at this beautiful sell off. This was just everyone hitting the sell button on Apple, considering Apple was extremely strong yesterday. People were trying to front run it, looking like it was putting in some bullish consolidation, and everything just got erased and reversed. So, clearly, clearly, um, nasty price action in the big cap tech. But overall, I do think we are well positioned. Our accounts did finish net positive today, considering we are net short the market. But now that the markets have sold off a bit, I mean, even the likes of Adobe, I mean, we, we're, we're day trading um, FedEx. We're also potentially day trading Adobe. But overall, look at this beautiful sell off on Adobe. Now that you've made a new low, you are technically at support. If you have this down sloping channel acting as support, you have this beautiful sell off bear flag consolidation break. Now you look for a technical bounce considering you are at support. You're trading at basically 2018, 2019 levels and pre-COVID levels. Um, so interesting, interesting price action on Adobe. I am eyeing this up for swing and a day trade if we get a little bit of a flush tomorrow outside of this channel. Um, we are day trading FedEx. So FedEx is interesting too because FedEx did put in a little bit of this reversal candle on that massive gap down. So like we said, just because this looks like a bottoming tail doesn't mean it's an absolute technical support level that was hold, which is why we've seen some continued downside. Now that FedEx has had basically from this gap down one, two, three days, most of the margin selling, in my opinion, has occurred. Um, you are at some great support levels here. And I think for a day trade opportunity, considering we have this beautiful, let me just draw this in here. Um, let me just draw in this intraday channel that I've been watching. So basically connecting major pivot to major pivot to major pivot. You connect this pivot low on this wide range green bar to this pivot low to this pivot low. Look what we just tagged. So this is why I'm day trading this level. We are at technical support and a little bit of an oversold short term condition. You're on a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 minute candles to a low into support, making a new low. So overall, I do like these levels um, for potential day trade, which is why I started accumulating. But we also accumulated key shorts to offset in the event that those long. So we're kind of hedged, but we're at the point where our hedges can actually work as, um, as profitable trades for us. So that's kind of my expectations for the market. Um, I do think even if we look at the IWM, some of the smaller cap stocks, now that the IWM has triggered and broken down from these key levels, even watching this key trend line connecting your main high in November to your pivot, to your pivot, look what you just closed below today. So you hadn't confirmed. So tomorrow is going to be confirmation day for the Russell. If you confirm below this yellow trend line, that is going to be extremely bearish for the markets and the overall economy. Meaning I think that the economy, since the Russell gives a, a better barometer than the S&P and the NASDAQ, I think the Russell is the best leading indicator for the overall economic health. And certainly small caps will be under immense pressure if we confirm below this trend line. Now, typically when you do confirm, you do get some sort of a little bit of a technical bounce to suck in new investors and momentum traders thinking that the turn is happening right before the probabilities take this price action much, much lower. So lots to think of. My analysis in the short term, like I said, since we're accumulating some longs, is that we get some sort of a technical bounce. But nothing is guaranteed in these markets, especially if people start to digest this Fed news and really start to panic on the back of QT ramping up and on the back that the interest rates in the US dollar have really spiked up tremendously. But it's really interesting that the, the short end of the curve is going up, but the long end of the curve is going down. So let's let's keep that in mind. This is why I think that there's a lot of mixed signals 
and mixed um, uh, signals across many sectors and different stocks that are really throwing investors for loops, which is why we are technical traders and which is why we have been profiting tremendously. Basically, when these markets have been making massive moves down, massive move up, massive move down, massive move up, massive move down, massive move up. So again, let's stay nimble. Congratulations on the wins. Um, again, we were extremely busy at the end of the bell, closing bell, slowly accumulating more long positions because I do think despite the US dollar surging yields, I do think we're in sort of a period where yields will now start to soften maybe considering that we don't have an FOMC meeting in October. So we've had the September one, which was today, and then October we skip and the next one's in November. So in basically two months time, the data can change very, very drastically, which could imply that maybe the Fed pauses or maybe the markets start to price in some sort of a Christmas rally as typically retail sales start to pick up during the holiday season. So lots to consider, lots of things to analyze, but nasty, nasty down day for pretty much it was a broad market sell off. I mean, if we simply look at um, all of these sectors here, nasty. XLF down, energies down, builders down, industrials, consumer staples, utilities, healthcare, real estate, um, consumer discretionary, technology, communication, Dow, broker dealers, lumber. Everything today confirmed the technical downtrend. There was not one single sector positive, and not even um, broker dealers were positive, not even lumber, not even copper. So the only thing really positive was that DXY. And that is certainly going to put an immense amount of pressure if we get that technical breakout. So let's continue to watch it. But even if we get that some sort of a technical breakout, I think the dollar can have a sharp panic move up to the highs of this 113 before we see a sharp reversal potentially coming back down to this 109 level. So let's continue to stay nimble in these markets and overall excellent job trading, excellent job being net short. These these massive massive sell side pressure action that comes in during the day is truly immense and, and and powerful and i'm glad that we have been on the right side of this sell side action so everybody please give this video a big like down below and stay tuned for more price